And welcome back to Cryptomaniac. I thought I would just make a really quick video on how to claim your BTG, so your Bitcoin Gold, if you are specifically a Ledger hardware wallet holder. So if you would like a Ledger hardware wallet, there's a link in the description below to help you along. That would really go a long way to help support the channel. Um, so just to jump right into it, you've probably heard in the last little while that uh, Bitcoin has forked off to Bitcoin Gold. And there's tons of coverage uh, out there on what that exactly is. It's to try to decentralize Bitcoin a little bit more, um, ASIC mining, all those kinds of things so that the average person can actually mine it and it'll be profitable. But there are all kinds of videos out there, so I don't wanna to be too repetitive. Um, if you're interested in more detail on that, look it up, there are tons of resources out there. So I've just developed a Twitter page as well. If you would like to connect with me there, I would love to follow you back so we can have a two-way conversation. Um, so I just posted a little bit earlier, four hours ago, on how to actually claim your Bitcoin gold. Now, I followed these instructions myself, and I have to say I found it a little bit difficult, and I had to go in search of how to do that myself. So I thought that I would just um, take some of the frustrations and problems that other people had in trying to claim their Bitcoin gold and just make a video on exactly how the heck and smackle that all actually happens. And so there is a resource guide here at ledger.zendesk.com and you'll find, well, I'll have the link right here in my browser as you can see. So how to use Bitcoin gold with your ledger. Now there's some descriptions in here, so make sure that your firmware is updated. So that's important, obviously. Um, now make sure that your wallet Bitcoin Chrome, your ledger wallet Bitcoin Chrome app is this version 1.9.9. So for myself, I had a little bit of an issue trying to figure out what that was exactly, only because when I went in to check out my Bitcoin wallet, um, the numbers didn't quite match up. So let's just do this together. So if you're new to Ledger in the first place, then you'll have to go over here to your Chrome browser apps and then down here to the web store. Once you get to the web store, just type in Ledger Wallet. That should get you to this right down here, so your Ledger Wallet Bitcoin, and you'll have to install the Ethereum wallet if you wanna use Ethereum with that as well. I've already done it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this one. So assuming you've gone through that process, let's just go ahead and connect our ledger. So one tip that I have on even using your ledger, so the magic of the whole thing is that you never actually flash your private keys anywhere. But in my mind, you still have to be a little bit careful because as soon as you go to write down your passwords, for example, your seed phrase, so your 12 or your 24 words, there's a camera in front of your laptop. So as soon as you, presumably you're gonna be doing all this sort of stuff in a camera environment uh, in front of your computer. So I would just make sure that just in case there's something, I mean, you would have no idea if your computer is actually infected um, because there is malware out there that might potentially take a photo of everything that you're doing every 10 seconds or whatever it is. It could even be that the video camera is just rolling while you're completely blissfully unaware of that and it's actually tracking your every move. And how stupid would that be if you're actually taking the time to write something down by hand and it's just being tracked and somebody's actually watching you do that at the same time. So do that somehow off to the side. Now me, when I go to actually put in my password, I know that there's a camera right here. What I do is I usually just put it out of the way. I'm cognizant of where the camera even is. Now, is this a little bit overboard? You know what, it might be, but as so many people out there say, it is the Wild West, and why just take chances with these kinds of things? So I guess the other part to that argument is if I logged in and my balance was suddenly at zero, then I would really feel stupid for not having taken those precautions, as opposed to feeling stupid now, taking those precautions and not knowing if it's actually worth anything. Who cares, it just doesn't matter, right? Just be careful. So now we're back into the interface right here. Now I noticed when I went into this ledger manager that it says up here, Bitcoin version 1.1.10. Now that's not exactly in line with what I was reading over on the other side, which was 1.119.9, right? 
So what I had to do, and it looks like a lot of people actually had to do was delete the actual app itself. So I tried to do that actually from in here and that turned out to not be the right thing. So what I had done was I just deleted this right here and then reinstalled it. But then it comes up with the same version of Bitcoin. So what I actually had to do was delete this and then go into remove in Chrome and then just repeat the process for actually reinstalling it again. And then everything appeared to work out just fine for me. So the second thing that you're gonna have to do is go into this ledger manager again. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see Bitcoin Gold. Now, it's really great to see that they've actually started to offer a lot of support for these other coins in the meantime as well, which is great. And so NEO has recently been added. It's a little more complicated. So more news on that to come or visit the ledger blog, though they've got some specific instructions there. And as an FYI, NEO has their own wallet as well if you wanted to use that and also earn gas as opposed to just keeping it on an exchange, which is not recommended. So once you go and install Bitcoin Gold, now you might find that it'll give you a an error message. And if that happens, it might be because you have too many applications on here. Now this can only hold a certain number of applications. I can't remember how many. I thought it was something like 10, but I think it's actually way, way less. So sometimes you might actually have to delete some of the applications. Don't worry if you do that, let's say like the Dash wallet, you're not actually deleting your Dash, you're just deleting the gateway into that wallet temporarily. But that Dash is all still there, for example, right? So you can delete things and then add them back but it is a bit of a pain. It would be great if this would support tons more applications all at once. It's a small device. There's not much memory, I presume. But anyway, so let's just say that you've got your Bitcoin Gold wallet now installed. So what I'm gonna do is actually navigate now where it says Bitcoin Gold and I'll go in there. And then I'll actually activate my Bitcoin wallet. Now, this is your Bitcoin gold wallet, even though it says right here, Ledger Wallet Bitcoin, but you've chosen Bitcoin gold on your actual device itself. Now, once you go into either of these, either legacy or SegWit, so depending on whether you had your Bitcoin on the legacy chain or on the uh, SegWit side, then correspondingly, your Bitcoin gold will be spit out on one or the other side. Now there is just a zero balance here. If I go back to settings and then blockchains, if I even go to SegWit, you'll do the same, I'm sure. And you'll also find a zero balance in here as well. So what the heck is going on? One of the things that you have to be a little bit aware of, in my case, I do actually have some, but that's because I've already gone through this process. So back to blockchains. Now what you're looking for is this little hidden business down here. So this BTG split tool, as soon as you click that, now it'll ask you again, this legacy or SegWit. So if you had your Bitcoin in a legacy address, then you will go ahead in there. And if you had it in a SegWit address, then you will have to go there and find it. So that I think is just a confirming stage just to see. So in my case, I actually had it in here. So what I had to do was go back to settings, blockchain, so wherever it is that you want to put it, if you want to put it in a SegWit address, for example, which is exactly what I did, then go into the SegWit side and choose receive just to get your address. And now you're going to copy your address. One of the other things to be aware of at this stage, anytime you're copying and pasting an address is just look at some of the first and the last parts of your key. So this is always just your public key, of course, never ever flash your private key, which this makes it idiot proof on a ledger because you will never even see your private key anyway. So some of the malware out there is designed to mess around with your clipboard functionality. So sometimes you will actually copy uh, what is obviously a Bitcoin or Ethereum address and then you will paste it and it will just magically be somebody else's. So that's pretty nasty, but of course, unless you actually take a second just to check it, you will never know the difference. So don't unknowingly send your Bitcoin or your Ethereum or anything else to anyone else unintentionally, especially black hat hackers. That's no good at all. So you've copied your address now. I'm gonna go back to blockchains and back to this BTG split. Now I'll go to legacy or wherever I had my actual Bitcoin. 
So uh, in my case, uh, on the legacy side of things, and then in here, when you actually see your balance, which I had in here a little bit earlier, but I've sent it off, what you need to do is just hit send and just hit uh, max. And that will plug in the total number that you have. But even perhaps before you do that, decide how fast you want it shipped over there. Now, in my case, I just went for low and I noticed that the fees were dropped down from $15 and something down to 46 cents or something like that. And if you push custom fees, it actually reduced it to zero, but I wasn't exactly sure what that was gonna do. I was happy to pay the 46 cents. In your case, depending on how much Bitcoin or Bitcoin gold you have, that number will be a little bit different for you. Um, and the less you pay for the transaction, of course, the slower it's going to take. But in my case, I mean, I don't really need to use it at the moment. So I was happy just to have it take its time. And in my case, after I did it, I checked about a half an hour later and it was already there. I don't know how long it took, but that's perfectly acceptable for me. So I would totally recommend doing that. Uh, and then just paste in your address and then just giving it a quick look over. Yes, it's exactly the same. At this stage, since you've now chosen your fee that you're gonna pay, now you could hit max and that will update based on the fee that you're going to pay. So we'll minus that out of which you've actually got in your wallet so that you're sending all of your Bitcoin over uh, with the fee. And then it's as simple as just hitting send. I'm not going to do it because I've got zero Bitcoin. So that would be a little bit ridiculous. Once that happens, then you'll get a notification on the actual device itself asking, did you want to confirm this transaction? It'll show you the key. Again, you've got a few of the digits at the back and a few of the digits at the front still in mind. So then you'll go ahead and say, yes, that's totally fine. And it'll be shipped off and you'll be all set. And from there, you are ready to either either hold or huddle or sell your Bitcoin gold. Now, it might be worth just sort of noting that Bitcoin Cash has had a pretty darn good run up. Manipulation arguments um, aside and conspiracy theories aside, it's done pretty darn well. And so in my case, I sort of think it's free money. So do I wanna sell it? You know what, I'm just gonna hang on to it. What I could do is maybe sell a portion of it and then just sort of see where the rest of it goes. If it all goes to zero, it was free money anyway. But we'll have another talk about all of those sorts of things uh, some other day, because um, I think there are some really good strategies, particular to forked coins that you get for free or other benefits that you get from an ICO where you've actually made money, you can take money as well as a profit and just let the other ones run. This is kind of one of those similar sorts of situations. So if you are going to sell, then the last thing that I would say is do a quick two second little bit of research. So going to something like coin market cap, go into Bitcoin gold. Now the current price has dropped at the time of recording. So we're at about 150 beans per Bitcoin gold. As far as free money goes, I'm pretty happy about that. So now just click on markets and here you'll see all of the exchanges that are actually selling or able to exchange, where you're able to exchange, buy and sell your Bitcoin gold. Now, the important part about this is just to sort of have a quick run through and see where you're going to maximize. So right here, for example, if you just wanted to cash out into USD, you could do that on Bitfinex for about $32 more than you could if you were just to go to HitBC and exchange it all for Bitcoin. But anyway, Point being that I think you should just sort of run through some of these top exchanges. Once the volume gets too low, it's not really even worth considering. So just forget about those and see in this list, where do you have an account and is it maybe worth opening a new account to do that? But on a side note from that, be careful right now because there are a lot of reports coming out to say that there are some inconsistencies with the chain and with the code at the moment. So be careful. My advice would be just to wait a little while, but you're free to do what you like with the tools given here. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, let me know maybe in the comments, what do you plan to do with your Bitcoin gold and what value do you see in it? It looks a little bit shaky and rocky. I don't know how good of a job they've done rolling this whole thing out right now, but in the meantime, it's out, we've got it. Let me know what you're gonna do. And uh, in the meantime, I noticed that a lot of other uh, YouTubers in the space have something kind of snappy and flashy at the end. So I don't know what's with all that, but uh, anyway, uh, we're not gonna do any of that here. So I'll see you later.